When you think of the Beatles, which guitars spring to mind? Perhaps the classic Rickenbacker and Hofner lineups of the early Beatlemania period, or the Epiphone Casino and Rosewood Telly played on the roof of the Apple Building in 1969? Well, these are certainly some legendary instruments, but if you dig a little deeper, you'll find some even more incredible ones played by the Fab Four. With that in mind, I'm Mark from Guitar Nerds, and these are my top five coolest Beatles guitars. Number five. Paul McCartney's most famous bass is without question the Hofner Violin, used in almost all of the Beatles' live appearances and on the majority of their early records. However, an unsung instrument heard on much of the band's later work was Paul's 1964 Rickenbacker 4001 bass. When Rickenbacker presented George Harrison with a new 360 12-string model in 1964, discussions began for Paul to also receive a new instrument from the brand. However, with only right-handed models available at the time, Paul had to wait almost a year before receiving a lefty version. As such, the first track to feature the new bass was Think For Yourself from the Rubber Soul album, recorded in November of 1965. Used as a backup bass for the last Beatles live dates, the 4001 would transition into Paul's main instrument for the recording of Revolver and the classic singles Strawberry Fields Forever and Penny Lane. During the recording of 1966's Sgt Pepper album, Paul gave the Rickenbacker a psychedelic paint job in keeping with the fashion of the time. The new look bass can be seen clearly in the video for Hello Goodbye and fits right in with the brightly coloured pepper suits donned by the band. Perhaps looking to invoke some of the band's original cohesiveness, McCartney switched back to Hofner basses for the disastrous Let B sessions, but gave the Rickenbacker one last outing with the Beatles on their final album, Abbey Road. Stripped back to a natural finish, the bass was McCartney's main instrument for the entirety of his time in Wings and for much of his solo career. A true workhorse bass with an unbeatable thump, the best example of which can be heard on the 1969 classic Hey Bulldog. Number 4. Okay, so I'm cheating a little bit on this one because it was never actually used on a Beatles recording, but it was used by a Beatle and it's super cool, so it makes the list. In one of the most iconic moments from his post-Beatles career, John Lennon took to the stage of New York's Madison Square Garden in August 1972. The gig was part of the One to One Festival, an event organised to raise money to support children with disabilities, which also starred Stevie Wonder and Roberta Flack. His first live gig in some time, Lennon's performance is raw and ragged, but is still absolutely captivating throughout. And for us guitar nerds, the guitar he is playing is an absolute treat. Originally a stock Les Paul Jr, the guitar would have featured a single P90 pickup and a tobacco sunburst finish. However, by the time it reached the stage of MSG, Lennon had sanded it back to bare mahogany and added a second neck pickup. Reportedly, Lennon asked luthier Ron Di Marino to fit a humper dinker, actually meaning a humbucker and showing his lack of knowledge of guitar parts. In fact, Di Marino opted to install a Charlie Christian blade in the neck position, a pickup well known in jazz circles for its clear and precise tone. As well as the refinish and the new pickup, the wraparound tailpiece was also removed and replaced by a more stable tunematic bridge. One of Lennon's own career highlights, he compared the MSG gig to playing at the Cavern or in Hamburg, and the image of him with the Les Paul Jr. is truly iconic. So iconic, in fact, that Gibson opted to release a tribute model in 2008 that recreated the modified guitar in meticulous detail. Number three. In 1966, the Beatles were at the height of their powers and were about to enter the mid-period of their career. With help and rubber soul, they had shared some of the clean-cut, mop-top image that defined the Beatlemania era and had begun experimenting with new sounds and new substances. Gone were the Gretsch and Rickenbacker guitars that have been omnipresent since 1963, replaced by instruments with less jangle and a much darker tone, one of which was George Harrison's 1964 Gibson SG. Equipped with the stock Maestro Vibrola, this SG was a key part of Harrison's sound on Revolver, with the humbucking pickups providing a chunkier tone than on the band's previous albums. Making only two public appearances, it was used at the 1966 NME Pole Winners Party, and then a few weeks later at a gig in Munich. However, it did manage to make it into three Beatles promotional videos, Paperback Writer and Rain in 1966 and Hey Bulldog in 1969. At some point in 69, Harrison gifted the guitar to Apple label mate Badfinger, and guitarist Pete Ham used it extensively until his death in 1974. These days, the guitar is reportedly owned by Indianapolis Colts owner Jim Isray, who purchased it at an auction in 2004. Number 2. Inner 2 is another red guitar used by George Harrison towards the end of his Beatles career. 
Shipped from the Gibson factory in 1957, the guitar that would later become known as Lucy started life as a standard gold top. By 1965, the guitar was in possession of John Sebastian of The Loving Spoonful, who subsequently traded it to Rick Derringer of Tourmates The McCoys. By 1966, the original finish was so worn that Derringer opted to return it to the Gibson factory and have it refinished in SG Cherry Red. However, unsatisfied with the refinish, he traded the guitar into Dan Armstrong's guitar store in New York City. Days after it was traded in, the guitar was spotted by one Eric Clapton, who instantly purchased it. However, Clapton's guitar arsenal was already stacked, and by 1968, the Red Les Paul was soon gifted to his close friend George Harrison, who dubbed it Lucy after the redhead comedian Lucille Ball. First appearing on the White Album, the guitar ended up back in the hands of Clapton for the solo section of While My Guitar Gently Weeps. Reportedly, both Lennon and McCartney saw little merit in the song and were putting in minimal effort while recording it. So Harrison brought in Clapton as he thought it would lift the mood and improve the rest of the band's behaviour. Harrison apparently told Clapton not to bother bringing a guitar to the session, humorously telling him that he had a good Les Paul he could use. Harrison would go on to use Lucy for the remainder of his Beatles career and can be heard absolutely wailing on it as part of the three-way solo in the closing bars of The End from the Abbey Road medley. Staying in Harrison's possession until his death in 2001, Lucy became an iconic instrument, not only for its pedigree, but for being a key part of the Beatles sound in the last years of their existence. As such, Gibson painstakingly recreated Lucy for a limited edition release in 2013, with 100 models being released worldwide. A fitting tribute for such an important guitar. Number 1 In 1965, Beatles roadie Mal Evans was dispatched to purchase two Stratocasters, one for George and one for John. Always thinking about the band's image, manager Brian Epstein offered to pay for the new instruments if they could find a matching set, and Evans returned with two 1961 custom colour Sonic Blue Strats. Putting the new acquisitions to use straight away, the band first utilised the signature twang of the Strat on their single Ticket to Ride, and on much of the following Rubber Soul album. For a great example of just how the band used the Strat to full effect, check out the unison solos from Nowhere Man. Neither Strat was used for live appearances, but Lennon can be seen playing his in soundcheck before switching back to a trusty Rickenbacker. Both guitarists favoured the blue Strats throughout the recording of Revolver, and Lennon can even be seen using it through some of the early sessions for Sgt Pepper. And while the instrument seemed to fall out of favour with John around this time, George gave his a unique makeover in keeping with the era. Taking various day glow paints, Harrison covered the entire front of the instrument in an array of rainbow colours, adding rock and roll phrases including Go Cat Go and Bebop Alula. The headstock featured a colourful cartoon figure and the word Rocky, which became the name of the instrument from then on. First seen on the Our World performance of All You Need Is Love, Rocky was also featured in the iconic performance of I Am The Walrus from the Magical Mystery Tour TV special. A key guitar in Harrison's solo career, Rocky remains the property of the Harrison estate to this day. A classic guitar that is the embodiment of the swinging 60s. So there we have it, five truly cool Beatles guitars that you might not have seen before. But did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments below. If you like what you saw, remember to like the video and subscribe to Guitar Nerds because we've got lots more videos coming for you very soon. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.